And a lot of people like what I was saying there because a lot of people don't understand salvation because, you know, it's a good thing right now that a lot of people do not preach works no more for salvation. There are still a few channels that say, hey, our works have something to do with us gaining salvation or our works have something to do with sustaining our salvation. Okay. That'd be like me telling my sons, like, well, look, son, you're my son. You got my DNA. But if you're a bad boy tomorrow, you're going to lose my DNA. Okay, I'll you're gonna lose that DNA. Then if you're a good boy, I'll give you my DNA right back. Okay, that, that's how retarded that sounds. It's stupid. I think that's what Satan does when he confuses everybody about salvation. He tries to convince everybody that our salvation is contingent on our good works and staying away from sin, when it's actually contingent on our belief. It's a good thing right now that a lot of people do not preach works no more. For salvation, there are still a few channels, but thanks to the work we're doing here in uptime, we're taking down these false teachers. The, the spiritual aspect of us that gets saved and rebirthed, that's done by the Holy Spirit. The spiritual aspect is nothing that man can do to affect our spirits. All right, is either our spirit is dead or alive. And the moment you believe in Jesus finished works at the cross, the Bible says in Romans 8, 10, 11, your spirit is quickened for the purpose of the day of redemption by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. The moment we believe the life giving spirit of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ enters and mixes with our dead spirit and brings it back to life and seals it until the day of redemption. Ephesians 430. Once this happens, it can never be undone. It's like when my children were conceived, my DNA is permanently infused within them. So when our dead spirit is brought back to life through the imputed power of the Holy Spirit, it is like Christ and is sealed until the day of redemption. We are now spiritually alive. We used to be spiritually dead, as Paul indicates in chapter 2, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So you were spiritually dead once you heard the gospel, you believed in it, the Holy Spirit came and dwelled with your dead spirit and brought your dead spirit back to life. Now we are spiritually alive. And then sealed it so nothing will ever harm it ever again. And this is what the Bible says about when we become spiritually alive in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. What does that mean? The earnest of our inheritance. It means the promise that we will receive the rest of our inheritance, which will be a glorified body at the rapture resurrection. The first part of our inheritance when we believe is a Holy Spirit indwelled glorified spirit. Our spirit is reborn. This acts as first of all a gift, but it also serves as proof that he will later deal with our body at the rapture resurrection, a promise of future performance. Earnest, like earnest put down on a home. When you put earnest money down on a home, that is you promising the seller of future performance by buying the entire house at a later date. So when God regenerates our spirits, he's telling us, I am putting the earnest money down with your spirit and at a later date, I will purchase the entire body, the entire home at the rapture resurrection because God has to complete us because he knows that we are three in one. We're not just spirit, we're also body and soul as well. And he will deal with the body at the rapture resurrection, which will then hence complete your entire gift and complete his entire purchased possession of you, body, soul, and spirit. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, because when you heard the gospel, you believed in that gospel and you believed in Jesus finished works on the cross to save you. God gives you his Holy Spirit as a gift, rebirths your spirit 
and now you are saved and sealed, waiting until the day of redemption. Holy Spirit dwelling within you. So your spirit gets sealed, saved, rebirth, done. Okay. Your body, on the other hand, he doesn't do anything with it. So you can stick that stuff in your body. You're not going to lose your salvation over it because your spirit saved and sealed. In Romans 8, 10, 11, what happens at the rapture resurrection is when the horn goes off. And if Christ be in you, that's the Holy Spirit. If the Christ be in you, the body is dead. Okay, your body's dead. So you got the stuff in your body. Your body's dead anyways, okay? It's not going to affect your spirit. The body is dead, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, Holy Spirit. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he who hath raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth within you. So the power that resurrects you or raptures you is the same power that already dwells within you your glorified spirit with the holy spirit well, we all have bodies right now and like uh, rick was talking about in the beginning of the show i feel something i feel like i'm going to disappear i feel this i feel this it's because the holy spirit is resonating inside your body saying hey it's almost time to go all right and Amen. when the trumpet goes off as a frequency the Holy Spirit will respond to it, and the Holy Spirit will do its job, change the body from the inside out. And unless you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you are not going in the rapture. So to say that I have that crap inside my body doesn't matter. It's not going to affect your salvation. All that stuff was that people put in their body, it was a platform that could be accessed, or should I say it would be uh, activated, if ever needed, if it's ever called upon, okay? It's like someone puts a program in your computer, and that program can sit in there dormant all this time until something activates it where it does its job. Now, you're not going to take the mark of the beast, Skylar 777, because you're born again and saved. You're going to be raptured. But let's say if you never came to the Lord, well, that stuff inside your body, when you go take the mark of the beast, say if you went ahead and did it, then... That stuff in your body will react with the mark, and you might end up growing scales or a tail or maybe some gills. I'm not sure. It's activated. You, you, it's you, all you activated. Back like this, where you have like animal leg walk around like a kangaroo, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> looking around. I mean, I, I don't know what's going to do. But, you know, besides that, folks, don't, you know, you do what you want to do with your life. But if you give your life to Christ and you've already taken it, you're good. You're still one of God's children once you get saved. My brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, a great end time move of God is happening right now and this will only continue for a short amount of time and we as believers working in his vineyard need to capitalize on this great revival taking place right before the rapture resurrection. And that is what we're doing here at Feed My Sheep today. We are a faith-based nonprofit that funds Christian missions all over the world and we are doing this through our missionaries who are sharing the gospel of grace, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, the hope and love of Jesus Christ finished works at the cross for our salvation. And they're accomplishing this by preaching the word verbally and also by video presentation. Many people watch these video presentations of the life of Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross and much more. And they immediately come to the faith of believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ for their salvation. This is a very effective tool. And after this is all done, we provide free Bibles to all those who are new believers that joined the body of Christ. And on top of all that, we are also providing these people with free humanitarian relief aid to help ease their suffering situation. And you will receive the same reward as our missionaries because now you are partnered with them through Feed My Sheep today when you financially support this cause. Because in 1 Corinthians 3, 8, it says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Who is the planter? You are when you invest in the Feed My Sheep today, when you plant your seed into this work. Who's a waterer? The missionaries and everybody that works underneath them because they use this money and liquidate it and turn it into something 
that's usable for the kingdom of God, like Bibles and humanitarian relief aid. Nothing sits in a bank and collects interest here, everybody. It is turned into something that's usable for the kingdom. So please help to keep your Feed My Sheep today going strong. Here's how. In the description box below, there's a link to our website. It's feedmysheeptoday.org. Go there. You can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, or simply send your gift in the mail. You also see the option there to become a monthly sustainer. If you can't give big right now, over a period of time determined by you. We greatly need monthly sustainers because if we have an idea what's coming in the next month, we are then able to plan ahead and make sure we have enough material aid and Bibles on hand in time to go into these areas so that we can be effective. Because of the supposed pandemic, there are delays in getting this stuff now, so we have to be able to order this stuff in advance. So we are definitely looking for new members to join our monthly sustainer family. And don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today, so that way you don't miss out on any of the things happening with the funding coming into this ministry. So thank you all so much for your support. May God bless you all. I want to go back to what we were topic, what this whole show was more topiced about, about the dreams. And I know this is your department, Bob, since you're here on the show. This part here, I wanted to, I just realized this the other day, actually a little bit earlier than that, but over a period of time, I'd say five years, maybe three, maybe three years, maybe I think about three years, I've been having these dreams of me flying above people but they weren't flying. They were on the ground like normal people. I was able to come down, speak with them, and my voice sounded like it had a real authority sound to it. Like it was really echoey, like loud, and, and it had a deep, like angelic, angelic, I can't say it, angel-like sound to it. Like, you know, hey, the angels are coming. You know, just a, a real nice voice. Mm -hmm. And I looked young, I felt strong, and I, I don't know what I had on my body. I had some nice clothes, I think they were linen or something. I've had dreams like that, and I've had dreams of being around people that I could fly, but they couldn't. The other day I learned, well, I knew this, but I kind of learned more about it, and then it just hit me. I said, look, that's what I've been dreaming about. During the millennial reign of Christ, the people that come through the millennium that get saved and they go straight into the millennium, they're not going to have their glorified bodies. They're going to get a sort of an upgrade on their age. They'll Like 100 years will be like an infant considered that time. They'll only live to a longer period of time. They'll still be capable of sin, but at a minimum. Because Jesus will be ruling with a rod of iron. He'll dealt with it quickly. Now, I don't want to know what the rod of iron is. Exactly what It'll be a system, a justice system, that is very well intact. I know that. And it'll be very swift. Him, the one that's on this earth, that comes from the tribulation, they will be basically gone in with their the robes or whatever they get. And they will be able to marry and produce in other words be able to because they people are going to populate the earth during that time of the 1000 years okay we you me bob and dustin chris everybody that comes back at the the beginning or the end of the seven years we come back and come back onto this earth we will have the glorified body that'll have powers we'll be able to fly we'll be able to do all that stuff our voices will probably sound different we'll be able to speak the language or whatever, that is what I've been dreaming about all that time. I couldn't figure it out until this past month. That's a, that's what that was. I've been seeing. So that I've been having dreams about me being in the millennial. We're going to be giving some sort of jobs, depending on your rank of, of your rewards. You will be responsible for certain things during that time. And mm -hmm. I did see something like that too, a glimpse of that. I was doing something. But I was over a lot of people all the time in a small, concentrated area in my dream. And to me, Bob, that sounds like the millennial, the millennia, the, the whole thousand years. I think that's what I keep dreaming about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah more likely it probably is. It probably is a millennium reign. Millennial reign that you're talking about right there. And another dream, me shooting up into the sky with super speed. It felt like a force was pushing behind my feet. Literally a powerful force that could represent me being able to fly at great speeds and to get to somewhere, or it could also represent the rapture. That mm -hmm. too. 
which were snatched with great force. That force is pushing your body, is propelling it, a super force. Uh, uh, it feels like a giant magnet under your feet. It's, it's you know, that's got to be. What else would it be? It's just a happy dream I had. There's got to be a significant reason for those dreams, folks. Like I said, the war dreams people are having, the Lord, it's resonating through their body and mind and soul and spirit that they are now being given the download to their brain at night when they're sleeping, Bob. They're, they're sleeping. The download is taking place. They're getting It's like the Matrix. They get plugged in the back of that thing. They're getting that download while their eyes are shut. God can just go like this and give you that dream, and it's like a download. When it downloads, it's playing at the same time, folks. And you wake mm -hmm. up, you record your dream on paper or on your tablet, and then you tell people on YouTube. There's a lot of channels out there, Bob. There's this one channel. She has someone on every day. I guess these are people that she gets and downloads from the Internet, puts them on there. But I've been seeing this increase in rapture nuclear war dreams. And I've had dreams about nuclear wars. Looking out my window, Bob. Remember that picture you like? This set with, this was at night. And I looked through the blinds, and in the distance, I saw this mushroom cloud. I was in shock at all. I've had other dreams where I was running from a nuclear cloud. And then all of a sudden, I was gone out of my dream, woken up. Maybe that was the rapture. I mm -hmm. escaped it. I wasn't phased by it. Yeah, but I've had a lot of rapture dreams. I had them when I was a kid. I never understood why was it when I was escaping something that was about to harm me, why I always shot up into the sky at such high speeds. Yeah. It was always it dark. Like. It was always dark outside when it happened. And it was like a nightly thing when I was a kid. And I never understood why. I was, why? I was like, why did I have to shoot up into the sky? Why so fast? And why so high? And I just keep going up and up and up and up and up in the upper atmosphere and the stratosphere. It just kept on going. And I never understood why Why was that necessary. I mean, maybe it could be about 20, 30 feet. And I'm good to go. No, I had to go all up to that stratosphere. So that right there, I, think, I believe the Lord was showing me a picture of the rapture when I was a kid. <coughs> you know, I was always escaping a lot of bad people that want to do a lot of bad things to me. And that is, of course, by the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. And a lot of people like what I was saying there, because a lot of people don't understand salvation because, you know, it's a good thing right now that a lot of people do not preach works no more for salvation. There are still a few channels that say, hey, our works have something to do with us gaining salvation or our works have something to do with sustaining our salvation. Okay. That'd be like me telling my sons, like, well, look, son, you're my son. You got my DNA. But if you're a bad boy tomorrow, you're going to lose my DNA. Okay? I'll, you're going to lose that DNA. Then if you're a good boy, I'll give you my DNA right back. Okay? That, that's how retarded that sounds. It's stupid. All right? When you are saved, and see, your spirit's brought back to life. Jesus is not in the business of coming here and sweeping your sins under the rug until you screw up again, okay? He's in the business of bringing dead spirits back to life. I think that's what Satan does when he confuses everybody about salvation. He tries to convince everybody that our salvation is contingent on our good works and staying away from sin, when it's actually contingent on our belief. Why? Because our spirit, all our spirit can do is believe or not believe. It's our flesh that does all the sinning. Okay, you don't see my spirit come out of my body and go try to kill somebody. No, it's the spirit is dead before Christ, before I heard the gospel. The spirit is just dead. All right. So last time I checked, when someone's laying dead on the ground, Rick, is that person a threat? No, because they're dead. No. Can't do nothing. But Jesus brings our spirit back to life. He gives us his DNA. He makes us children of God. And I I showed you guys Roman 10 verses uh 10 and 11, but if you go to Romans a few verses later, Romans uh, 8 16, it says, The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That means his spirit is permanently mixed with our spirit. It's like water, and you add coffee, and now you have coffee water, and you can never change that water from coffee water back to regular water it's a permanent thing it can be diluted but it can never 
be undone. Which means we have his DNA now. Just like my sons, they have my DNA. Can't take it away from them. We are now permanently children of God. And go to verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits, the Holy Spirit, okay, within us, of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, like you're talking about earlier, all right? That feeling within yourself. You feel that groaning in yourself? You're so fed up with the filth of this world. So it says, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to it, the redemption of our body. And people are like, hold on a second. I thought we're already adopted. I thought we are already children of God. We are. We have been spiritually adopted, but not physically adopted yet. Our body has yet to be glorified at the day of redemption, the rapture resurrection. This is why our apostle Paul says right here to a bunch of saved born again believers that we are still waiting on the adoption. We are spiritually adopted to Christ, but not physically adopted, not yet. Waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. Or should I say, waiting for the adoption, which is the redemption of our body. As Romans 8.22, read it for yourself, 8.22.23, all right? And what is the redemption of our body? That's the rapture resurrection event. We're waiting for the adoption. Look, our spirit has already been adopted. So that power is within all of us right now. That resurrection power is within all of us. And that resurrection power is, is signaled corporately for all of us when Jesus descends from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, trumpet of God. All right, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. Okay, so that power is in you guys. So anybody that's sitting here that's saying that I don't know if I'm going to go in the rapture, then you don't understand what salvation is. Okay, because God started that work. He began a good work within you, and he will continue to the day of Christ. Like I said, folks, the, the word is, is written. The law is written on our hearts, folks. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We are saved. We are saved. In, in, it's forever. Okay, you're not, you don't lose your, your salvation's intact or no one can take that from you. No one can snatch you out of God's hand. The devil is always trying to make one believe that, that, hey, uh, you know, you're not going to heaven still. You're still going to go to hell because you're bad. This, you're, you're, you, you're, you're backslidden and all that. You're going to go to hell. No, you cannot. You're not going to go to hell. You will be dealt with. What happens when a kid gets out of line with their with their father? The father breaks out the belt or whatever form of punishment, whatever, whether it's verbal or physical, whatever. Now I'm not saying you 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 know to, to beat your kids. I'm just saying you scold them. Isn't that the correct term? Scold means you mm -hmm. deal with the problem. Okay, rather it's a, a, a spanking or restriction, take away their PlayStation, whatever. Okay, right. get them where it hurts, and they learn from it. It's a chastisement that takes place. I would say that chastisement doesn't take place in heaven, by the way. It takes place right now. Yeah. It, 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 God will, will chasten you. And you get chastised right on your chasing. You're just like a father spanks their kid or whatever. So that's how you know you're saved. That's another big indication. And friends, don't forget to request your free After the Rapture Survival Info Flash Drive today. Free Flash Drive Free shipping, our gift to you. On this flash drive, there are seven gigabytes of information that will be very helpful to all your friends and family who will be left behind, starting with the King James Bible, Children's Bible, plus 80 Bibles in other languages that are the most common after English. On this flash drive are also ebooks, letters, sermons, Videos, news articles, articles written by believers explaining why mass amounts of people have disappeared and what's next, and much, much more. There's even a section called ABC Salvation, which is a quick introduction that people can read where they can quickly learn about who Jesus Christ really is and a condensed version of the good news of the gospel that was achieved by his finished works at the cross and how they can be saved through him and him alone.
These letters are also provided in 80 different languages most popular after English. All this and much more is available on this flash drive that we could send to you for free. Just email us your request and that information is in the description box below or just go to our website edvforme.org and download the entire thing for free. They are separated into four easy downloadable folders you can download and save to any device. Copy and paste this information to your friends and family's computers and devices. Put them on other flash drives and hand them out. This is an excellent way to get the information out to everybody we know so that way they are prepared if they are left behind. Information about this is all in the description box below.